Hey, what's happening you guys? One Fish, Two Fish here. You've got Jeff and myself, Christy Anderson. And today you guys are gonna be giving you the lowdown on how to fish jetties and why they're so productive. Everything from New York to Texas, uh, down to the Florida Keys. Everybody who's into fishing knows that jetties produce some of the biggest fish out there. So Jeff right now is gonna go ahead, jump in and give us the lowdown on how to catch bigger fish fishing some jetties. You guys, jetties are some of the most productive areas to look for fish because they have moving water, tons of moving current. There's a lot of depth changes. There's a lot of structure. So jetties attract a larger biomass. They also attract just more forage, more life around jetties. So that's pretty much everything that we look for in any fishing spot, especially an inshore fishing spot. Again, we've got the current that's moving in and out. Typically with a jetty, you're gonna have an inlet or you're gonna have deeper water that's gonna hold more current next to that. It's also gonna have these big rocks behind us are excellent ambush points for our predator fish. So you guys, this video is perfect. No matter where you're at, if you're trying to catch snook, striped bass, tarpon, flounder, redfish, anything, that's what we're gonna break down today. All right, so let's talk about just the generalities of the species that we're gonna be targeting on jetties and kind of where they associate themselves to. Flounder fishing is wildly popular from New York all the way to Texas. So flounder, as a generality, are going to be tied as close as they can to these large rocks behind us, as well as the depth changes. So when I'm targeting flounder, we're gonna be casting right up against the rocks, literally right into the rocks and bouncing our jig off those rocks, and the flounder are gonna be in there ambushing you know, our bait. Also, we're gonna be looking for drop-offs that are not up against the jetty. That could be like where you have like a flat or like a shallow area next to this jetty. And then where the inlet is, where you have the main boat channel, those are also areas that you wanna be looking for. So I'm gonna be making targeted casts right up against the rocks and also, um, you know, where I have those drop-offs. And where I see at like the end of jetties, you're pretty much always gonna have flounder because flounder are ambush predators. That's the only way that they feed is they ambush their prey. So where you have a lot of fast moving water next to slack water, you're gonna have flounder. So as a generality, that's where you wanna target flounder when you're fishing a jetty. When you're fishing for snook, snook love, love moving water. So as a generality, you're gonna be looking for where the current is the strongest and where you have the most structure. That's where you're gonna have snook as a generality. So Spanish mackerel are gonna like that cleaner, clearer ocean water, typically. So Spanish mackerel are typically gonna be at the mouth or the end of a jetty. That dirtier uh, inlet water that meets that abrupt line that you can literally see a line of that dirtier inlet water and the cleaner, clearer ocean water. Those Spanish mackerel are gonna be thick right near that line. So that's where you're gonna be casting gotcha plugs and everything and that sort of stuff where you're gonna be targeting Spanish mackerel. So sharks and tarpon are pretty much gonna be normally at the end of jetties. Oh, oh, oh I'm on, I'm on. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you have that deeper water and then also in the main channel, if you're fishing inlet next to that jetty is where you're gonna be finding those tarpon and the sharks. You know, where a lot of times you have like a jetty, you have the main boat channel, you might have a bridge. Like down in Florida, we have a lot of these types of jetties. Then that's where you're gonna be finding your tarpon and sharks coming in and out of those inlets next to the jetty. Um, so redfish and sheep's head will typically be all up and down a jetty. Like even right here, right up along the beach, we'll typically have you know, redfish, snook, and then the sheep's head will be wherever there's the most structure. So if you see any large rocks that have barnacle growth, if you have poles, pilings, anything like that along a jetty or just a larger rock, that's where you're gonna be targeting the sheep's head because that's where they're gonna be hanging out. So those are all just kind of generalities and how you wanna be thinking about a jetty no matter where you're fishing, whether that's Montauk, New York, um, or you're down in Florida, South Carolina, or Texas. The speckled trout will also be up and down a jetty on the beach as well as at the end of the jetty. However, speckled trout also do like that cleaner, clearer water as well. Redfish, snook, and even sometimes tarpon are the exceptions as well as flounder to fish that even if you have that dirtier uh, runoff water, then the redfish, the snook, 
and um, you know the tarpon will still be in that area wherever there's food and bait that's where they're gonna be in when you're targeting fish on a jetty as a generality most fish are gonna be tied with the current in the structure so that's one of the key components that we want to think about throughout any time we're fishing a jetty and that's kind of what makes fishing a jetty fun but also really challenging is that's where you're gonna catch the fish, is where there's gonna be a lot of current and a lot of structure. So you're pretty much gonna to have to accept the fact that you're gonna get hung up a lot. You're gonna lose tackle. You're gonna get snagged. That's okay, that's part of jetty fishing. A lot of times, here's footage of me catching a snook down in Jupiter, Florida, and I literally thought I was like hung up until I saw the snook jump and my line started screaming. So it's okay to get hung up fishing a jetty. That's just part of it, you just have to accept it. With the incoming and outgoing tide, especially on jetties that have that are right next to an inlet, typically you're gonna get clearer, cleaner water with an incoming tide because that's the water that's gonna be coming from the ocean, bay, whatever. It's gonna be pushing in that cleaner water. And as a generality, you're gonna have more dirtier, murkier water in the inlets and in the creeks. So an incoming tide, you're typically gonna get that cleaner, clearer water. On an outgoing tide, you're gonna have that kind of creek water that's gonna have murkier, more stained water. This is something you always wanna be thinking about when fishing those incoming and outgoing tides. Because as a generality, especially speckled trout and Spanish mackerel are going to be feeding and more active mainly in that cleaner, clearer water. So on an outgoing tide, especially with jetties that are near an inlet, you're gonna have a visible bowl where this like, like darker, muddier water is going to be meeting that cleaner, clearer ocean water and it's gonna almost have like a bowl at the mouth of that jetty, at the end of the jetty, or at the mouth of the inlet. So those are areas that you also wanna target when fishing a jetty, is where you have like dirtier water next to cleaner, clearer water. Because what's gonna happen is these bait fish, the smaller fish, and all of the food, the biomass, is going to be getting all discombobulated in that moving water and that current and in that darker water as soon as they come in the cleaner water that's where our predator fish are going to be waiting for their food to come into their territory where they can feed on them you always want to be thinking about where's the current where is the structure both the structure you can see with your eyes like some jetties at the end of them they have like a mini lighthouse or like a tower so that's an area you definitely want to target but also a lot of jetties you know and a lot of the things that we're thinking about also are going to be things you can't see like a depth change or a drop off on a jetty these are things that you definitely want to be thinking about and you definitely want to be um, making some targeted casts to these areas because you're gonna have predator fish hanging around those features so again both the things you can see and you cannot see but we cannot emphasize enough how important that moving water is to a jetty. And that's what makes jetty fishing also so effective and attracts such a large biomass. So you pretty much have, you know, just an excellent habitat for everything from crabs to croaker, spot, mullet, threadfin, anything that you can really think of is gonna be attracted to a jetty. So you're gonna have the smaller bait fish all the way up to like eight to 10 foot sharks plus and tarpon are gonna be hanging out around jetties. So remember, when targeting fish on jetties, you want to be paying attention to any area that stands out from the rest. Like if the current is pretty much all the same, but then you have like a strong moving current next to slack current, that's definitely an area that you wanna target. If there's a larger rock that just stands out from all the other rocks, that's an area you wanna target. Again, I use a lot of my phone I use Google Maps, satellite imaging. I also use Navionics app. Anywhere that's gonna tell me where there's a drop off or a depth change is where I'm gonna be marking that area on a jetty. Masonboro Inlet in Wilmington is an amazing jetty that has giant fish. Elias V Fishing, if you guys haven't seen his YouTube channel, definitely check it out because he catches some of the biggest drum ever off of that one jetty and it's all year round. So Elias is catching his fish both up on the jetty and then also off the jetty at those drop-offs and in the larger bodies of water there right next to the jetty. 
All right, so now I'm gonna be going over some of the gear and tackle and baits that you guys can be using when fishing up against a jetty. Right here I have two super basic and kind of your fundamental setups when you guys are getting after uh, some fish. We've got, um, we're gonna be starting out with just a jig head and then we're gonna go all the way to some live bait. Cause I know a lot of y'all out there, especially for Jeff and I, we love fishing some artificials, but sometimes the live bait just gets it done. So first of all, let's kind of go over really quickly why we're gonna be fishing this. Uh, you guys are gonna be fishing up against the rocks. So typically you guys want something like a swim bait that you guys can be bouncing on the bottom. Uh, right here I just have a little paddle tail and I've got um, a 3 8 ounce jig head on here. Depending how deep that you guys are fishing, you might want to up uh, your jig head to this 3 8 ounce. But if you guys seem to be getting hung up, there's a lot of rocks. Uh, you want to keep it up off those rocks, but still in the strike zone. Maybe go up to a quarter ounce, um, maybe even a little bit lighter than that. But typically a quarter ounce will get the job done unless you're fishing a little bit deeper. So here is just kind of a little example of just fishing straight to a jig head with some soft plastics. Um, don't be afraid to use kind of bigger um, bigger profile baits too. You guys can go up to, um, you know, a four, four inch swimming mullet. Um, shrimp do really awesome. All right, second super fundamental um, rig that you guys can have is a fish finder rig. So you've got right here just an egg weight sinker. You've got your two way swivel tied on and then your leader line down to your hook. This is awesome if you guys are looking to fish with um, anything from shrimp to cut mullet. You've got your crab, any kind of live bait you guys want to put on here you guys can catch fish um, if you guys are you know fishing in the creeks you might and you guys typically use 10 to 15 pound test think about upping your leader line to about 20 pound because it um, is going to really help be more you know with the abrasion up against the rock so that way you're not going to be breaking off a lot all right and then lastly just use the appropriate appropriate size hook for whatever uh, bait that you guys are going to be putting on there all right so this is number two this is really awesome all right y'all so this rig right here is perfect for literally any species you guys are looking to get after especially flounder if you guys are just looking to go out there have fun get somebody on some fish uh, your fish finder rig is going to get the job done you guys can pretty much put any fresh cut bait on this and catch a fish all right y'all so christy did an amazing job talking about the fish finder rigs and just the soft plastics on the jig head but if y'all are on a jetty and y'all want to go for like big sharks big tarpon big cobia whatever then this right here is what you want to use so what we've got this is a 10 foot surf casting setup we've got an 8,000 size reel we've got it loaded with a 60 pound braid and what you want to be doing this is like an uh, this is like a graduated version of the fish finder rig same thing just a larger setup So what we have right here is you've got your eight ounce or just heavier lead right here Depending on the speed of the current like in Sebastian Inlet, Oregon Inlet um, in North Carolina um, Certain areas that have a very fast moving current You're gonna be fishing a 10 to even 12 ounce piece of lead that you're gonna have attached to your snap swivel right here so you've got your uh, your swivel right here that slides up and down your main line. You got your lead attached to that. We typically like to have a bead that's just kind of a buffer in between your two-way swivel and your weight. Uh, this right here is gonna allow your bait to sit on the bottom um, in that heavier moving current in that deeper water where your larger game fish are typically gonna be hanging out. So again, you just got your snap swivel, sides, it slides up and down your main line, your weight, and then the length of your leader line is gonna depend on, you know, sometimes people are fishing like as short as a six inch leader line or about a foot to two foot, even a three foot leader line, whatever that is. So, uh, you know, you're gonna be fishing. I've got 65 pound braid. Uh, my 10 foot rod right here is gonna allow some really long casts off the end of the jetty. And then, you know, right here for, if you're fishing for sharks, you probably wanna actually be using wire instead of like monofilament or fluorocarbon. So something that's just much, much heavier. But if you're fishing for tarpon, then this is great too. Uh, so I'd recommend at least 50 pound test for your leader line. And then as far as your hook, this is actually a really small hook as well. You're gonna have, this is a seven knot, but you know, either a seven knot, eight knot, 10, whatever it is. This is perfect for tarpon because you can put your finger mullet on here, your blue runner, blue fish, whatever you're using for bait, you know, so that's just the basic setup right there for a graduated version of a fish finder rig. But a fish finder rig is 
probably the most popular rig that you're gonna be fishing with. If you go out with a guide and they just wanna put you on fish, they're probably gonna be putting you on those fish finder rigs like the one Christy was showing you. So you can catch everything from flounder to redfish, snook, tarpon, whatever that is. But this right here, y'all, if you guys really wanna get on that giant fish off of the jetty this is pretty much what you're going to be using for that so we like to we like to fish a popping cork um you know near jetties because what this allows us to do is y'all we have tons of popping cork videos on our youtube channel um and here's some footage of us catching fish up next to a jetty uh with a popping cork so speckled trout redfish um and even flounder sometimes i will catch uh flounder on this popping cork so the popping cork is highly effective because that's where a lot of those fish are going to be is really close to the rocks in that fast moving current so I also like to fish a popping cork as well. Again, it does limit you a little bit because you're only fishing that top part of the water column. So popping cork, I always have one of these either on my kayak or on my boat when I'm going fishing jetties, just because you never know what you're gonna see. If you see like current and a big rock, you know, and you're getting hung up all the time, uh, then a popping cork is also a great option as well. Um, Here's some footage. This was actually kind of fun. Christy and I were catching these giant cobia that were literally like right off the end of this smaller jetty in Virginia Beach. So we were just catching Spanish mackerel. I think we caught some flounder that day too. And then luckily I had a bucktail tied on with this setup right here. So when we saw the cobia swimming by, we were able to cast this bucktail and catch those uh, cobia. So I like to also have a bucktail uh, just on the boat when I'm fishing jetties too sometimes. Uh, this right here, I've got, you know, just a 5,000 series Florida Fishing Products reel, and then just a heavier, like seven foot, uh, medium heavy action rod. And then I've got my two ounce bucktail right here. Some stuff that we don't have to show y'all, but it's also really effective fishing for jetties is gotcha plugs. If you have Spanish mackerel um, and bluefish around your jetties, then you definitely want to have a gotcha plug. Here's some footage of Christy and I tearing up some Spanish mackerel on our jetties. So you definitely want to have a gotcha plug um, for, you know, casting that. And that's just going to be on your typical like trout rods or even redfish lighter action rods that you're going to be casting those two. So gotcha plugs. Um, spoons are very, very popular in Texas. I know that y'all love casting spoons off of your jetties in Texas, and you guys are casting those larger spoons and larger metals off the rocks, um, you know, using these larger setups, like an 8,000 series uh, reel and just your 10 foot surf casting rods. So um, spoons and metals are also highly effective when fishing jetties. All right, y'all, so I wanted to show y'all just some other basics for fishing on jetties. Um, just out of my tackle box right here that you definitely want to have and also um, Actually, if we can just show this real quick. So actually you guys um, this right here is just your standard bottom rig and You've got just like your two small hooks on it. You guys can use this for fishing off of jetties, too So, you know, you don't want to cast this right up to the rocks But you're typically gonna be just casting this like off of the rocks you can catch anything off of it. So a bottom rig will also work too. Bottom rig is also highly effective, not just off the beach, but also jetties as well. Um, some other things that I wanted to show y'all, just some basics. So here's our different types of weights right here. This right here is your egg weight that's going to be used for your fish finder rig. That's going to, you've got your hole in it that it can slide up and down your main line. And then you have like your pyramid sinker that this is another variation of your weight that you can use for that larger um, kind of setup that like we showed y'all that you're going to attach to your snap swivel. You want to have some of these two way swivels right here um, for making your fish finder rigs. Um, and also you can use these when you're just tying on your, uh, from your main line to your leader line as well. Um, these are bait holder hooks. So you've got like your larger seven knot hooks that you know, you're gonna put, you can put your larger bait on, larger cut bait when you're going after the sharks, tarpon, or cobia. At least the seven knots, which you wanna use. Eight to 10 knot is what most people use as well. And then you've got your smaller hooks right here. So this is like a two knot. Okay, so these smaller hooks right here, this is what you're gonna use when you're fishing with live shrimp cut pieces of crab or just fresh cut bait. This is what you're gonna be using right here. So just some smaller bait holder hooks right there. So that right there is it y'all. So that right there is everything y'all need to know about how to catch fish off of a jetty. I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. We got a lot more tutorials coming for y'all on our channel. Please, if you have not, 
help this channel out and give us a like, give us a subscribe. This is what we do full time. We don't make any money off of these videos. We don't charge. So if you guys could please just help out this channel and hit that subscribe button. All right, y'all, get up off your butt. Go catch yourself some fish. Peace out.